Hey there, it's Gregory from DAP University. So welcome back to this multi-part tutorial series where I'm showing you how to build ETHSwap. This is an instant cryptocurrency exchange where you can buy and sell cryptocurrencies at a fixed price. All right, so this is the last video in this series. So if you haven't watched the previous videos, go ahead and check those out, all right? Uh, but what we're gonna do today is finish off the project and turn it into this completed project. We're pretty close. Here's the progress we've made so far. Um, and now what we want to do is, you know, just finish this off. So before we get into that, you know, uh, if you haven't already, click the like button down below and subscribe to the channel. That really helps these videos get found uh, with the YouTube algorithm. And, you know, if you want to take that next step towards mastering blockchain to become a real world blockchain developer, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right. So in the last video, you know, we created this buy form wired it up we can actually purchase tokens you know i can see i have 200 dap tokens now um, you know we've created the smart contracts in the previous videos created this uh client side website and now we can purchase dap tokens with this eth swap contract now what we want to do is finish this and sell the tokens all right so here's the here's what the finished product looks like you know uh, we want to add a buy button and a sell button to change this form uh, and whenever we you know, buy we use this one and when we sell we use this one okay so let's go ahead and do that um, we can take most of what we've done we've done most of the work all we have to do is uh, create a new form that does the opposite of what this one does and then add a way to toggle between the two and we'll be finished so let's go ahead and open up the main component all right we got two components so far well three uh, the app.js this is the you know, the one where we do most of the work, <laughs> uh, the main component, this is the main content, I guess I should say, this is where the, the buy form currently is. Um, and then we have the nav bar. So let's create a new component and we'll call this buy form, capital B, capital F for form, .js, all right? And we'll uh, just copy this main content, put it in buy form. Uh, and then we wanna take the form content, all right, take all this content, all the way to the ending form tag and take it out and then take out all this, all right? And inside this return, all you should have is the form code. All right, so do form like this, all right? So we'll change, um, we'll see your main, we'll change this to form or by form, okay? And then, yeah, ETH logo, this all looks right to me. Yep, yeah, all good. So now we'll import this into main. So we'll take out ETH logo, all that kind of stuff. We'll say import uh, by form from by form. Okay. And then right here where we have this form, let's just replace it with the by form. All right. And now um, we're going to pass down all the data that we need to the by form, right? Because we have some functions inside of there. So basically we'll just say, uh, you know, by form, and then we'll add like uh, ETH balance. Say this dot props, ETH balance. Okay. And then we'll uh, do this. We'll say token balance, this dot props dot token balance. And one more time, we'll do uh, buy tokens. Okay. So this is the balance. Uh, for Ether, this is the token balance and this is the buy tokens function. So now we should go back to our page and it should still look the same. Yep, let's make sure it still works. Let's just buy uh, 100 tokens with one Ether. Well, let's do decimals just to make sure you know it, it works properly. So do 50 tokens with half an Ether. Click swap. You should see MetaMask pop up. Click confirm. And there we go. Now we have 250. All right, so the buy form still works. We've refactored this. So now what we want to do is create a sell form as well. All right. So I'm just going to copy this. Uh, well, let's just do it this way. New file. Sell form. .js. Paste all this code in here. And for now, let's just take out the form. Uh, and just say, you know, div. Say sell form. All right. And then sell form. We're just going to... Uh, you know, have a placeholder so that we can switch in between the forms, okay? So the buy form still works. Um, and inside the main.js component, what we wanna do is track uh, the current the, the current form that's selected, okay? So basically, uh, we don't need this output here anymore because this got moved to the buy form. We're gonna say current form. 
and the default value is going to be buy. All right. And now what we want to do is um, create some buttons that will actually change this value. And when this is buy, then we'll show this. And when it's sell, we'll show something else. But I'll do that in a minute. Uh, so let's handle the difference. Uh, let's let's first import the sell form. Sell form. Okay. And then uh, we'll do cell form here. All right, let's just see it below. All right, here's cell form, right? Save it, make sure it's still working. Yeah, here's cell form. So now we can say, you know, if the current form is buy, show the buy form. If the current form is sell, then show the sell form. Uh, we'll do that with a conditional statement, just like we did in the other component. We'll say let content. We'll say, uh, actually, we gotta do above the return. Let content. We'll say if uh, this dot state dot uh, current form equals uh, by uh, else. All right. So if it's by form, then content's gonna equal this. All right. And let's do content. I have a typo here. And if not, it's gonna be the cell form. And we'll say content. This is just like we did in the other component. All right. So let's go back to the page. And here it is, cell form. <laughs> so it's not by, let's see, I made a typo here, current form. All right, boom, there we go. So the current form is by because it's the default. Now if we say cell, it should change. All right, cell form, awesome. So we haven't you know, created the cell form just yet. This is just a placeholder, but we want to make sure that the state um, is actually changing that. So by, all right, awesome. So now what I want to do is create buttons that actually change this value so we can toggle between the buy form and the sell form, okay? So I'm going to do that like this. So inside of here, um, you know, just above the card, I'm going to paste this in here, boom, all right? Let's go look at that on the page. There we go. Looks a lot like our uh, our the mockup. So this just added some buttons to the page. So you know you could code this out yourself if you wanted to, or you could just fetch this from the completed project in the trip. And sorry, in the description below. Um, but what this does is it just adds you know a new div here with two buttons, buy and sell. All right, and then this little spacer in between. All right, and we're not quite. We have a little extra space in our final mockup or in our final version. So let's uh, say class name equals MT3, so that's margin top three, right? And then boom, there we go, awesome, perfect. So now what we wanna do is click on these buttons and change the forms. Right now they don't do anything, they just you know sit there, um, but it's pretty easy. So what we'll do is um, we'll add a new row here, okay? And then we'll say uh, on click. So remember we did on change for the buy form here, or on change and we did on submit. Here we're going to do on click. So whenever we click the button, we'll say uh, events. And it's pretty easy. We'll just say this set state, current form, buy. And then likewise down here, we'll uh, let's do this, replace this here, sell. And I'll see it in action, buy and sell. Awesome, pretty easy. So yeah, we just changed the state value and this reads the state and says, if the state says the current form is buy, show the buy form. And if it's uh, sell, then show the sell form. Okay, awesome. So now let's uh, let's keep coding out the sell form because um, right now it's just this bare form like this. <laughs> uh, so let's you know copy all the content that's in the buy form inside the render function. Let's replace, well, sorry, replace it. Uh, and we're just gonna do the opposite, all right? So basically put all this inside here. Here's the old form, all right? So basically it's gonna be two buy forms right now. <laughs> Oops, we got a problem. Uh, let's pass the data down that we need. Uh, okay, for now, let's just do this and do the exact same data so the form works. All right, so cell works. Okay, it looks the exact same. That's because it is the exact same. Um, and let's change this, okay? So we're gonna reverse this. First, let's change the tokens. Um, so we'll, we'll just do it one by one here. First, um, this should be token balance, all right? The input is now tokens because they're gonna sell them, all right? And then um, whenever we're converting the values, the ether amount should be uh, should be token amount. 
And instead of multiplying it by 100, it should be divided by 100, right? Because you sell the tokens, divide them by 100. All right. And then uh, that's the output. Okay. And then instead of ETH logo, we'll say token logo and say DAP. Let's actually just copy this. Do this. Oops. Sorry. And we'll go ahead and swap these. Okay. And then uh, for the output, this will be Ether balance or ETH balance. All right. And then uh, I'll do ETH logo. Okay. And then exchange rate should, we could say, you know, 100 DAP equals one ETH. And then swap. And that should work. Let's click it sell. Yeah. There you go. So the balance is now 250 for tokens and then 95 for Ether. And we see the exchange rate change as well. All right, boom, there we go. So the last thing we want to do is wire up the uh, uh, form submission. So um, we'll see it like this. Basically, we'll change some values here. So instead of Ether amount, it's going to be token amount. All right, this input value to string. Uh, all right, so we'll say sell tokens here. And it's going to blow up because it doesn't know what sell tokens is or ether amount. So say ether amount. Uh, sorry. All right. So I'm not sure why sell tokens is. Uh, it's, we're not calling the function. That's why it's not blowing up yet. All right. So now let's uh, change this. So we're done with buy form. So we'll go sell tokens here, all right, for the sell form, all right. And then finally, we actually want to <laughs> create a sell tokens inside of here. Sell tokens equals this dot sell tokens. All right, and all right, it still works. That's because we're not calling the function yet. And then finally, we want to uh, create a sell tokens function like this. Say sell tokens. All right. And the sell tokens function is going to work a little bit differently. So uh, it will be the token amount. It's going to be the opposite. Now, this is really the final thing. Once this works, the entire project should work. But here's a very critical thing. I want to go back to the test and remind you that you know, selling tokens is a two-step process, all right? There's two functions at play. If you go to the contracts, uh, actually, to look at the test first. Uh, whenever we do sell tokens, remember, the investor must approve the tokens before the purchase, all right? Because the ETH swap token, the ETH swap exchange contract sells it for the investor and the investor must say, yes, approve the tokens before that happens, all right? So we have to call this function and then this function. So inside app.js, um, we'll say this, say ETH dot, sorry, ETH swap methods sell tokens. Actually, no, no, sorry. We're not going to call this on the exchange. We're going to call on the token first. So token methods, all right, and then approve, right? Must be approved first. Uh, and we want to do the approval uh, to this dot state ETH swap dot address. All right, and we want to uh, do the token amount. We want to say, yes, you can sell the number of tokens that I'm telling you to. All right, then we do send. Um, we don't do value here. We just say from this.state.account. All right, and then on transaction hash, that's okay. Once that's finished, then we uh, sell the tokens. Say this.state, ETH. Sorry, ETH swap methods sell tokens, token amount. All right, and then send. So just like we did here, I'm just going to copy this like literally. Oops, sorry. And then we copy this. All right, and then we set the state loading to false. All right, now let's give it a try. So let's go back to the page here. 
So here's the buy. Let's make sure it still works. Let's buy, uh, you know, 100 tokens. Click swap. MetaMask will pop up. Click confirm. All right. So there we go. We got 100 more tokens. Now let's go sell those 100 tokens. 100. We should get one Ether back. Click swap. Oh, we got a problem. All right. So this dot props that sell tokens is not a function. So it's in the sell form. All right. Let's just trace it all the way down. So sell tokens is here. All right. And then sell tokens is here. This dot sell tokens. That looks right. So now let's go to the main component. Uh, sell token. <laughs> That's the problem. Sell token, no S. Let's just keep going though. Make sure. So sell form. Um, let's see here. Let's go down to the sell form and say sell tokens. All right. Perfect. This dot props that sell tokens. Let's try it again. So we've bought, it still works. Let's just try again just for just for sanity's sake. One ether, confirm. All right. And then sell. Let's do 100 tokens. And then we should see the balance get down to 350 if it worked. So swap. So do you want to spend your DAP? Yes, we do. Click confirm. And then a second pop formation could come up. Uh, click confirm. And boom, there we go. We sold the tokens back. Our balance went down uh, to 350 and our Ether balance went back up to 94. All right, so there you have it. That is the completed project. You have successfully created ETHSwap, the instant exchange where you can buy and sell cryptocurrencies at a fixed price. So congratulations, you've really come a long way in this tutorial series. You know, we started out uh, from scratch. You learned about blockchain. You learned about how to build smart contracts, how to work with cryptocurrencies, how to build a client-side application in React.js. So yeah, take a minute to congratulate yourself. You've come really far. Um, so I'll say there's you know several ways you could get extra credit by improving on this project. Maybe you want to turn this into a portfolio piece if you're trying to become a professional blockchain developer, or you just want to show it off to your friends. Um, you know, you could support multiple tokens on here. You know, you could change the tokens that you want to swap. Of course, you'd have to add support for that in the smart contracts. You could change the uh, redemption rate where, you know, it's updatable. Maybe like over time you change the price. Uh, you know, you could create a way for the uh, person to take profits, whoever created the smart contract whenever they, you know, uh, create this, like withdraw the Ether balance from the exchange, stuff like that. So there's lots of ways you can, you know, continue on with this for extra credit for homework. But this is definitely a great start, all right? So again, the final project code is down in the link in the description below. Um, and if you want to take that next step to mastering blockchain, like let's say you really like this tutorial, then I highly recommend that you head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. Because inside there, I teach you how to build a fully fledged cryptocurrency exchange where you can create buy orders, you can create sell orders. Um way beyond, you know, just this simple exchange that you see here. All right. So as always, click the like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, that really helps these videos get found so that more people can, you know, benefit from them. And um, until next time, thanks for watching DAP University.